So what do you think, Millie? What should we make for dinner? Should we make spaghetti? Oh, that smells good, doesn't it? Oh, yes, spaghetti and meatballs. Yummy. I know you love spaghetti and meatballs. Yes, you do. Oh, it's so yummy. Oh, we should make some. Yes. And we can put spaghetti sauce and we can make meatballs. Your favorite. Oh, you would love that, wouldn't you? Oh, that looks yummy. I know. Reading the book that we read just made me so hungry. And we can make our very own spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, not those kind, huh? You don't, you don't want those kind? No? Well, what about meatballs, Millie, that fall from the sky? Millie, do you want meatballs that fall from the sky? What do you think? Meatballs that fall from the sky? I don't know. You, you think that'd be cool to have food come from the sky? I know. Me too. In the meantime, we have to actually make our own food in the pot with the noodles. Here, you want that? Yeah? Huh? You want a spaghetti noodle? Can you even eat that? No, you don't like spaghetti noodles? All right, well, we'll put that in the pot for you. No? No? How about we give you a meatballe? Hmm? Little yummy meatballe, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that you like. Meatballs in the pot. Yes, yummy? Okay, well, we'll let you eat your meatballs down here. And I'm going to show the kiddos how to make our spaghetti and meatballs crafts. Is that okay with you? You know, you're busy eating. Okay, well, hey, kids. I'm glad you could join us tonight. We're going to be making a fun craft to go along with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. This is a fun story about a tall tale. Tall tales are really exciting stories that we use to talk about um, events and, and um, things in American history. Um, some tall tales talk about how special places in America were formed, like the Grand Canyon with Pico Spill, or maybe how the logging industry got started with Paul Bunyan. Um, some of them talk about how the Great Lakes were formed. And others just talk about silly stories like what would happen if the clouds were to rain down food. And that's what our story is all about. So let's go ahead and make a craft that goes along with that. We're going to start today with our rainy meatball craft. This is a really easy craft to make. Um, if you come into our library, Her Memorial Library in Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania, you can pick up a craft kit. We have everything put together that you need in the craft to make this fun craft. Um, but if you can't make it in, that's fine too. You can still make it with everything that you have at home. All that you're going to need to make this craft, if you don't need to do our spaghetti sauce, would be um, a sheet of construction paper. That's the color blue. You can use light blue or dark blue. You're going to need to cut out some brown circles for your meatballs out of construction paper. Make sure you make them lumpy and bumpy like so that they look like real meatballs. And you're going to want about four of them. You need to cut out a letter J out of um, black construction paper because this is going to be your umbrella handle. You're going to need to have four lengths of yarn. They're about two to three inches long. And you're going to need four of those. You're going to need three cotton balls for your clouds. You're going to need a paper plate that you've cut out to look like the top of an umbrella. And then you're going to need a way to color your paper plate. You can use crayons. You can use um, markers if you have markers that you want to color with. Markers always work. Or you can also use paint. I like to use paint because I like to be messy and paint's the easiest way to do it. And then you're also going to need to punch out a bunch of little circles with a hole puncher. This is a lot of fun to do so if you have a hole puncher you can punch them out with that. Um, if you don't have a hole puncher don't worry about it. You can still make the polka dots. You can use a different color paint and then just blop paint on. Or if you're using crayons and markers, you can just use a different color crayon or marker to put your um, polka dots on your umbrella. Or if you don't want polka dots and you want to make stripes, you can do stripes, you can do zigzags, you can paint flowers. Be creative. Make your umbrella look any way you want to. You don't have to have it look just like Mrs. Post. So, but this is how I made my umbrella and that's what I'm going to show you how to do tonight. So the first thing we have to do is paint your umbrella. And like I said, this gets really messy. So you want to take your paint and you just want to, Millie, you need to go lay down now that you had your dinner. You can't, we can't play squeaky toys now. And then you want to take your paintbrush and you just want to paint all of your umbrella around and around and around. And you want to be sure that you get all the edges. This is why it gets messy. And then when you get over here on the um, ribbed edge of your paper plate, if you're using these kind, make sure that you really get in the edge as well. If you have a foam paintbrush, these work the best. If you don't have a foam paintbrush and you have a bristle brush, that's fine too. 
You can also get your fingers good and dirty and finger paint. How fun would that be? Unless, of course, you don't like to finger paint. So you just want to really get good in here and paint it all the way around until you've got the whole thing painted and it looks like this. Now, ordinarily, while the paint is still wet, you could go ahead and add your polka dots. But since my paint here is dry, we're going to have to glue them on. And that's easy enough to do because we're just going to put little drops of glue in random places on my umbrella. Again, if you want to do any other kind of design, feel free. Um, you can use it with paper and then just glue them on. If you use the school glue or the all-purpose glue, it will dry clear. So it doesn't matter if you dribble a little bit, it'll all disappear. The kits that we provide in the library do come with about 10 to 15 yellow dots in each bag. Um, if you want more or less, you can um, cut out more or do a different design. Again, it doesn't, doesn't have to be one specific way. And then you can just put your dots on your umbrella like so. This takes a lot of eye-hand coordination, which is a really good craft for young kids to do, um, especially kids in preschool as they're learning um, how to use their fingers and their hands and their eyes in coordination. So as you're working with your, your kiddos, um, you can put the, the blue dots on and have them put the yellow dots on as you go. You can also have them do some of the cutting if you're going to do zigzags. That'd be a good practice for them on using scissors before school. Okay, so if you have extra dots left over, you can just discard them. You won't need them anymore. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to flip your umbrella upside down. And you may need to wait till your polka dots have dried. Um, we're going to go ahead and chance it anyways. We're going to flip it upside down here. And you want to put a bit of glue, a little bead of glue, above each of your um, uh, half moon shapes here. Because this is where we're going to attach our meatballs. And that's what our strings are for here. You want to take each string. And you just want to lay it in that glue good there. Press down to make sure it sticks. Yes, this does get sticky. And you may get sticky fingers, so you're going to want to have a paper towel or something nearby so that your fingers don't get sticky and you don't wipe them on your clothes like Mrs. Post tends to do. Um, and then she has to do more laundry and get the glue out of her pants. So make sure you have a paper towel handy. Once you have your four strings attached, now we have to attach our meatballs. So you want to put a meatball under each of your strings, like so. And then another one here. And we got a little bit of purple paint on my table. So when you're painting, make sure you put a cloth cover down so that you don't get paint on your tables, unless you've got a table that cleans up as nicely as mine does. And then you want to put glue here too. And same thing, you just want to attach the yarn to the meatballs. And you just want them to dry like that and dry like this. And dry like this one. Okay, now this can take some time to dry. So we're actually going to take a break from this craft and I'm going to show you how to do our secondary craft while this dries. Oops, I lost one. Then we'll just stick him back up on over here. Okay. So the next craft we're going to work on while that dries is our spaghetti plate dinner. This is a really simple craft to do for really young kids, but even your older kids might have fun being creative with this one. All you're going to need for this craft is a paper plate, some red tissue paper. Um, we cut ours up into strips, but you can use yours in squares. Again, if you come to the library, they're all in strips, but it doesn't matter how you have it. You just need a, a good quantity of it. And then you need a large amount of yellow or white yarn. Um, we average somewhere between a yard to a yard and a half of yarn here. And we just kind of wound it all up and wadded it all up into a nice big tangled mess so it looks like spaghetti. And what we're going to do, and then you also need to take a paper lunch bag. And you want to cut it into thirds. You don't want the bottom part that creates the, the bottom of the bag. You just want the top um, part of the bag and you just want to cut it into thirds. 
So the first thing you want to do is you want to pour a large amount of glue onto the center of your paper plate, and I mean a large amount of glue. In fact, you might actually be better off just taking the glue cap off and doing that. And that makes a big, glorious, gluey mess. And we'll clean that up later. And then get your fingers sticky and dirty because here you want to rub that glue all the way around. And then we're going to add the tissue paper because this is going to be our spaghetti sauce. Now, if you don't have red tissue paper, you could use yellow or white and make it a marinara sauce if you wish. But you just kind of want to lay your tissue paper down. You want to kind of cover the whole area. If you need to tear it into squares or strips to make it fit, you can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a fun craft. And we can add another one here. And we have lots of tissue paper here. And more here. And then another one here. And we can smush it around because the glue is so sticky and gluey that it's just going to kind of absorb it all nicely for us. And whoops. And we'll put another little bit here. Because marinara sauce on spaghetti is fantastic. And we'll put a little bit over on that side. And we'll do one more strip on the side here just to kind of give us some sauce. Okay, now again, this time we need to take our glue and pour another massive amount right in the center. And we kind of again want to spread it around with our fingers. And then you're going to take your wad of string and you're going to plop it right on top. And with those sticky gluey fingers, you want to press it in nice. And you want to try to get some of that glue on your yarn and fluff around. And if you need more, then you want to make sure your lid's on your glue tight and open it up. And you want to pour some in here. It's okay to get the glue on the yarn. That will make the yarn kind of crispy and hard. And as it dries, it'll fluff out and you can kind of fluff it out and that will keep it in its position so that it doesn't go anywhere um, when your craft is all done. So if you can see kind of how I'm putting the glue all over and I'm getting the yarn in touch intentionally here with the glue and even in the corners. And so now it is a real kind of gluey sticky mess. And you can even drizzle some of the glue on top. That'll harden up the yarn nicely. And if you have any glue left on your fingers, you can just kind of put it on the side. Okay, now what are we gonna do with these, these pieces of um, lunch bag? You want to crumple it up into a ball, just like that, until it's kind of small and crumply. And then you want to roll it around in your hands. Roll it, 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 roll it. Just like you would um, cookies if you're making cookies. I have some dried glue on my fingers. And then you want to do that with the next one too. Again, you want to kind of open them up and crumple it. And then you want to roll it around. And it makes a nice little meatball. -y. Same with this one. If you've got lots of um, lunch bags at home and you want to make more than three meatballs on your plate, be my guest. Make as many meatballs as you can. And then again, you want to just add some glue to the bottom of your meatball, like so. And you want to glue it onto your plate of spaghetti. And you want to glue this one onto your plate of spaghetti. And you want to glue this one onto your plate of spaghetti. And this would be a dish that every Italian family will love. And there you have your spaghetti and meatballs. When it dries, if you look here, my yarn is, is puffed up and it's thicky and it, th thicky, it's thicker and it looks more like spaghetti and meatballs on your plate. And then you can actually reenact a falling spaghetti and meatball platter from the town of Chew and Swallow. Okay, so let's go back now to our umbrella and we'll see how it has dried. Okay. Oh, we did lose one, but that's okay. We'll stick it back on here. So the next thing we're going to do is actually glue our umbrella to our piece of paper. And we want to glue it so that it's on an angle and you want your paper to be what we call portrait length. This would be um, landscaping when it's the long ways. We want to do it portrait length. 
so that um, the cloud so that the meatballs are raining down. So you're going to take your um, your umbrella and you're going to run your glue right along the top underside of your umbrella, just like that. And we're going to flip it upside down and gently press it onto our paper like so. If your meatballs are still drying, you can go ahead and leave them flipped up so that the glue dries. And we're gonna have to re-glue this one right here a moment, because he fell off, but that's okay. Just add a little bit more glue and we'll make sure that he gets a, a more drying time on that. And we'll just put him off to one side. Then you're going to take our umbrella stand and you have to decide if you want it to face this way or this way. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you want to put your glue, just run a bead of glue along the length of the umbrella and then just slide it under and press down. And you can make it as long or short as you want it to be. Last but not least, we have to put clouds in the sky and that's where the cotton balls come in. You want to take your cotton balls. Oh, I got fuzzies. I'm sorry. You want to take your cotton balls and you want to stretch your cotton balls out, gently pulling on them so they look like big fluffy clouds. Clouds in the sky. And that's one. And then we'll fluff this one out. It's like fluffing pillows. Make them fluffy and wispy. If you want to be really exciting and make them storm clouds, you can dye them with some black paint. Let them dry after you fluff them out, dip them in black paint, a little bit of water in your black paint too, and then lay them on a paper towel to dry and then you'll have black clouds that you can put in your sky if you wish. But I like the white clouds. And then you just put more glue on and then you can put your fluffy clouds into your sky for when they're raining down meatballs on the town of Chew and Swallow. And you want to let this craft dry thoroughly, and when it's completely dry, you can hang it up and your meatballs will dangle down like they're raining down on you in the story. So I hope you guys all enjoyed making these crafts this week, and we look forward to seeing you again later. Have a good time making your crafts and getting clean from all the glue and paint. It's so much fun to get messy. Take care, everybody. Bye!